Hello, my friends. How are you doing? It is time to pop the big question. Why is Affinity Photo so much better than Photoshop? Also, I want to invite you to my live stream tomorrow where I will show you amazing tools for creativity and inspiration. And I will review your entries for my weekly creative challenge. Yes, you heard right. I'm doing a creative challenge every week and have done so for way over a year. And please, I want to encourage you to fill out the survey that is linked below. I am going to rework right now my Patreon and all the rewards for the people who support me. And I want to give you the best rewards ever. So I need to know which of them are most helpful for you and most fun. Let's get started with this video. So as you can see right now, we are in Affinity Photo and the first thing that we realize, that we recognize, is that this interface is beautifully designed and also very easy to understand. First of all, let's have a quick look at the bar on the left here with all of our tools. And you can see that each of the tools has a nice, really beautiful and easy to understand design. And even in the sub menus, the icons are specifically designed to tell us what the tools are doing so it's very easy to find them again up here on these bars you can see one of them is a smart bar that is changing to the most important things that I need to use that tool and again it's very simple and often also colorful to give me some information on top of them we have even more icons they are nice and big and also colorful and on the right side we have all these tabs here again they are very easy to read, easy to understand. And this gives you a really good understanding of what the software is meant to do. And also, if you have problems with seeing, or maybe you're a little bit older, this is really good for you because you can see what you're doing. You can identify the icons and the tools that you want to use. Let's switch over to Photoshop. And you can see here that basically everything is simply gray on white. All the tools here on the left side are white. When we look in the sub menus here, there is more very abstract design. It's kind of hard to understand and also just white on gray. And up here in the menus, the same thing. All the icons also are smaller and none of them is in color. So this is a lot more abstract and harder to understand. Now let's come to the second point and this is the flow on how to use the tool. So I want to do something really simple with you. I want to create a rectangle and put a gradient in it and adjust that gradient. We want to do this first in Affinity Photo. We go, of course, to our gradient tool, uh, sorry, to our rectangle tool, of course. When I click and hold, you can see I have a selection of a lot of very fun and easy shapes. Let's select the rectangle here. And you can see when I draw this out, I'm getting a live preview of what the rectangle is going to look like. I let go and I get all these handles here and another handle for rotation. Again, when I resize this, I get a live preview. When I rotate this, I also get a live preview. Now for our gradient. Up here we have fill, we can click on that and we have swatches, colors and gradients as a tab. And so everything here is nice, big, and easy to understand. I can simply set up a color here of my choice and then I have the gradient that I want to work with. Of course, the next thing that comes to your mind is when you want to adjust the gradient a little bit more is to use the gradient tool, of course, right? Because that is what the name is. So you go over to your gradient tool and it shows you the start points of both sides and you can grab them, move them around and you have a live preview of where the gradient is moving, the rotation and the density. Let's go over to Photoshop and see how it works here. So we go to our rectangle tool here. Uh, when we hold it, we have some, well, very basic choices here. Let's select the rectangle again. And first of all, I drag this out. There is no live preview. I get these thin blue lines. Again, when you don't see that good, if you're a little bit older, you might not even see these lines. You have to let go of your mouse to actually see the rectangle you create. Now we get all these handles here and that is nice. But again, when I resize, 
no live preview. The rectangle stays there as if nothing changes and I only move around these blue lines. The same thing happens to rotation, but I have to know that I can go with my mouse into the corner because there is no extra point for rotation. And if I do this again, there is no live preview for whatever reason. So now let's go and adjust our gradient. Well, we click on fill. That is easy to understand. Then we have these icons here, not text, but icons. And they are again gray. They are white on gray. So you have to see this and know this is a gradient. You click on that. And of course, you can select out of different gradients and you have even a list here with more gradients. So that is actually a kind of nice feature here and pretty quick to do that. Now, here is the thing. I want to go over now to my gradient tool and you have to know that this is actually a gradient tool here because it's gray again. And you do this and it cannot be used. How do you do that? You have to figure it out somehow. So you can see here the learning curve is a lot higher. Now here is a thing that you can do. You go back to your rectangle tool, you go to fill and you look at all these tools and this tiny little icon here with this line, this is where you can actually rotate your gradient. How you move the gradient on the other hand, this is another mystery on its own because you can't just grab the handles and move this around, right? But I want to show you another thing that is important. And this is again about live updates because the live updates are really important for the convenience. So let's go back to Affinity Photo here and I want to create a pixel layer now. Let's delete this one here. And I want to create again a gradient in here. So let's draw out the gradient and you can see that I can draw out the gradient and it is live. And as long as I'm using the tool in Affinity Photo, I can move these handles around to adjust that. I can go in here and change the gradient type. Let's go to radial, for example, and I can also change the colors of my gradient so I can adjust exactly what I need. Let's go back to Photoshop. Let's delete this and create our pixel layer. And here we have our gradient tool. And now nicely enough, it works, but it doesn't give you any preview at all. So you have to kind of to try until you have the gradient you want. And you can't adjust the colors either. You can't switch the mode. If you want to switch the mode, so you have to go to these icons and this is radial here. You see nothing is changing. You have to redraw your gradient. So every time you want to change something like the type of the gradient or want to adjust the color of the gradient or anything else, you always have to redraw the gradient. And this can be really cumbersome. So you can see here, this didn't even accept that. So the learning curve is a lot steeper and it includes a lot more steps, especially because you don't have these live previews that make the life easier. And for these reasons, you can see how Affinity Photo is so much better, so much faster and so much convenient in just keeping in the flow, being an artist and creating really cool things like, for example, this Patronus deer that I've created in one of my live streams. OK, here's another point that's really important to understand. When you look at Affinity Photo, it's a software that you buy, which is Affinity Designer. It's a vector program, Affinity Photo for pixels. And then you have Affinity Publisher, which is for for example, for print, when you want to make a book or a flyer, stuff like that. And you can see that you can buy each of them for 55 euros, roughly. I think it's the same price in dollars. So when you buy all three of them, you are spending one time 165 euros or dollars, I think. And often they even have a sale for 50% off. So this is half. You don't even spend a hundred bucks on all these three software tools. Now, when we look at Creative Cloud, well, you do have Photoshop, but I can assure you that over your creative progression, you will at least use also Illustrator at some point, And you will at least also use InDesign at some point when you want to create, for example, a cover or layout or stuff like that. Or you want to work with vector art or download something from the internet that is just a vector file and need to edit that a little bit. You need these software tools. You can see Photoshop on its own is 10 bucks. This is, by the way, without taxes. 
And then if you want to have these two tools, you're already over 50 bucks. So you're going to buy the whole package, which is all of the tools that they have. And this is $53 again without taxes. So let's think about the life cycle of a designer. And when you would say you work for 30 years and pay these uh, 53 bucks and taxes on top of that every single month after 30 years you come up with around twenty thousand dollars that is a lot more than the 165 bucks for all these three tools and i'm sure there is going to be an affinity photo too that you have to repurchase but still you can see how this is much much cheaper 165 bucks compared to twenty thousand dollars so here is another thing we need to understand and this is a little bit on the point of where you have to decide which of the two is right for you and this goes very much into software to buy as a tool or software to rent as a service because these are very different because affinity photo right now is a software tool that you buy that is basically it that is what you get there is no big environment there is no other tools this is not integrated in a huge way into a bigger process right on the other hand photoshop is so when you go for example into photoshop up here on the right side you have these buttons where for example i can share my work not only with other programs that i have installed but also i can right away mail it i can upload it to different kind of services so i can send it to the customer i can also this is another thing work with other people so i can invite them to edit my project which is really important in a team especially if the team is not at the same location sometimes you have someone at another country at another city stuff like that right and this is what i mean by software as a service because photoshop is built into all these environments like for example Adobe stock where they have photos, videos, audio, um, vector art, 3D art, all these kind of things that you can download and use. Uh, you have Adobe fonts, you have a portfolio that is made by Adobe. This is kind of a very basic uh, website service. You can simply upload your pictures and it's already a website which might also be nice for your customers that they can present their stuff without having to pay for an extra website then you have behance's kind of yellow pages for designers where you can upload your stuff you can present it to other professionals you can be found through that so this is really nice uh, to make connections to network with other people of course you have adobe cloud where you can upload things and share it with other teams or with your customers so all of that is very nice and these collaboration tools I have already talked about. And if all of that is important for you, and also if you need all these kind of pre-made things, for example, here you can buy a lot of text effects, like these specific effects you see on the screen right now, you can use them as they are and just change the text and it will look exactly the same. This is something you can do with Photoshop, but not with Affinity Photo. So. If you are embedded in all this kind of creative industry, in this pipeline, in this process, these $20,000 are probably worth it over the time. And you need these tools to work inside of that pipeline with all of these tools and be able to exchange your files and be able to quickly have, for example, a stock service that is included in the software and different fonts you can buy on the go stuff like that and the creative cloud where all of your files are stored so a customer can download that easily on the other hand if you don't need that at all and you don't want to go through this very harsh learning curve at the beginning and you want to save a lot really a lot of money you can go with affinity photo because it's just so much more fun it's just so much easier and it is just built for you if you want to be creative, stay in the flow and just want to have fun with an easy to use software. Affinity Photo is absolutely the better choice than Photoshop. Okay, that's the tutorial for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my live stream tomorrow. Bye.